Welcome to a Cascade Valley Coyotes week number 10. This is year number 13. I lose track but half the time. But we're week number 10, year number 13, and it is time for them Cascade Valleys to uh, start get cascading. It's going to be fun, though. We've got really fun matchups. We're playing Tennessee today. They're 7-2. and two. They should be ranked. We'll probably be ranked if they... Well, they would definitely be ranked if they beat us. Um, but we're hoping they don't win today. We haven't played this in a little bit. And then we also have the ECU Pirates. Is that what they are? Uh, who we play as well. So, uh, two fun matchups that we got. And we're going to get those going. This will be both turn into YouTube videos. There'll be episodes 191 and 192. Math is hard. It's a real deal. I see you in the YouTube chat. All right, let's swap. Swap that. All right, here we go. We start recording. Let's get it. All right, there we go. Welcome back to year number 13, week number 10 for the Cascade Valley Coyotes. Number one team in the nation. Uh, okay. Now this week we're facing a Tennessee team that honestly is pretty good. They're actually way better than what their actual ranking is. They're not even ranked right now, which is pretty wild in the top 25. But they are 7-2 in the year, 4-2 in the SEC. They are good. There are a B- minus across the board, though, so I feel like we should be fine. But you've seen Cascade Valley play down the competition time and time again, so you never know. If we check their team leaders, their quarterback, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 705 yards on the ground with 5.5 yards per carry for camp, and 6 rushing touchdowns in their top receiver, 6 touchdowns, 401 yards. Nobody really standing out. I mean, when you compare to, you know, Taylor Reed over 3,400 yards or Tyrell Brown running for 919 with 5.8 and 17 touchdowns, or Carnell Killens, who's out there killing it right now with nearly 1,000 yards already at this point in the season, I think our team's better. What's up, Justin? All right, let's go recruiting. I think we're pretty good here. Okay. Now from a top school standpoint, we're still feeling for the most part that we're in a really good spot. Uh, we should be able to land Jameer Nave relatively soon. MJ Williams, we're kind of creeping back up the board after Notre Dame had their week eight visit. But again, we're only 85 points back. We're getting like 300 plus back per week. I think we're going to be fine here. Schweiderman, again, is a guy that we may end up losing out on, but I'm still fine with that. He's the backup. Greg Polk, your mother's favorite player. Out here climbing the boards again. Week six visit was good, but in two weeks, he's going to Oregon State, which means we probably struggle to keep him unless that visit's really bad. Uh, Demetrius Dunstan, again, top spot. We have a visit next week. Ever Duarte, week 12 visit. I think we're in a good spot overall for that. Uh, and then MOBA, who again, another athlete. We are really, really far behind. I'm trying to get us to be within 2,000 of the last place team, but it's probably not going to happen. We'll probably get locked out, but I'm hoping we can maybe buy ourselves back in. Hey, appreciate it, TMG. All right. Now, from a Heisman standpoint, Tyrell Brown is still that guy, pal. Up at the number one spot, six grabs for 102 yards and two touchdowns last week, and then 108 in the ground. He is, again, a dual threat out there killing it. The surprising news, though, is that Taylor Reed comes onto the board. You're now seeing him 27 to 38 last week for 458 yards and six passing touchdowns. Tyrell Brown has a really good chance to get his second Heisman in his career and then obviously bolt for the NFL. But... Taylor Reed is trying to go ahead and get his first of his young career before he gets an opportunity to go to the NFL after the next season. It might happen. Okay, let's do... Oh, yeah, top 25. Uh, and if you're watching over on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. The little like button helps an absolute ton. Appreciate you guys. Now, what's really interesting here is that we thought we were the number one team in the nation, but we actually aren't. Uh, in the college football playoff ranking, I mean, we are the number one team in the coaches poll, but from a college football playoff ranking standpoint, USC is way better than us right now, uh, or they're tied with us technically, which is kind of wild to me. They played Wisconsin and won by seven. We played Mississippi State and won by a whole lot. I don't understand how this is even close right now. We should be the better ranked team. Also, I just realized Arkansas State or Arkansas is actually tied with us as well with a 995 points total. So there's technically a three way tie right now. But I'm telling you right now, we ain't losing. 
Okay, and then I think school record wise, Simmons broke that record, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Desmond Simmons has that record. And then in a season, the record is nine. What does he have right now? He's actually kind of close. Pause that recording. I think he's kind of close. Oh, no, he's way off five. Okay, so he probably doesn't get that, but I guess I'll say it. No, I thought it was Maslow for a second. I thought that was Maslow. Uh, Sacks, 13 by ODR. He's having a year. Jesse Rivers. He's having a great senior breakout season, honestly. This is his only year really playing. Yeah, he got two tackles with one assistant tackle last year, and then he comes in this year and gets 11 sacks. Six foot six, 265. He might be a GGBFL guy, you know? We might have to put that man in the GGBFL. Okay. Um, got that. Recruiting is essentially maxed out. We can't really use any of those points. Tennessee with the orange and white. And then... If they're doing orange and white, I kind of want to do... Can we do anthracite? Will let me? I don't think it will. I think we do the old white jerseys with anthracite, the old anthracite pants. I think this will be fine. I think that'll be fine. All right, cool. Uh, let's get it, chat. Let's get it. I'm kind of shook that there's snow in Tennessee. It looks bright AF right here. We'll be honest. It looks so bright. Oh my god. Well, I, mean, I was doing the same. I was like, man, I would love to practice right now. Nope. No shot. Over under 42 and a half for the Coyotes. Ooh. Mmm. I'm going to say under because I haven't played in a couple of days and this seems pretty good. All right, at Tennessee, it is a snow game. Things I did not expect to see when we travel down to Tennessee today, but I did expect to see Tyrell Brown cook some people. Love to see it. Jay Boehm out here in the edge. It's like a little fake there. Oh, Tyrell Brown hitting the seam. Tyrell Brown trying to go all the way to the end zone. Can he get there? And Tyrell Brown on the second play of the game says, hold on, buddy. It's a house call. Big play. Sorry, Jack. Couldn't put that top back on that bottle. Big 
play here. Trying to get our guys involved. Quarterback's going to keep it. Brian again. Silas Brian, you ain't trying to do that on us. I'm also trying to remember, did we try to recruit Silas Bryant? That name sounds really familiar. Maybe we just saw his name at some point, but I'm like, that feels like a guy that at some point we were trying to recruiting. What a play here. Mac Miller trying to get in the open field and he gets decapitated after that hit. Guys again, trying to do something here. A lot of pressure, but what a throw by Silas Bryant as Desmond Simmons brings down Anthony Burrow. Hey, what's up, Sergio? Good to have you here. Keeping it going. Oh, he's trying to keep this one. Donnell Gambling, though, in the backfield, stopping for a loss or two. What's weird, real deal, is uh, I did a trade with the Redwoods, and it was able to go through. But ours, for whatever reason, can't. I don't understand. It's so weird. Cascade Valley sticking to a lot of man defense. Blitzing pretty heavy. Oh, my God. What a play to cut down him. And he caught that with two guys right there. Good shot, chat. Kind of shook there. Our guys need to stop gambling and company trying to get out there. It's going to see what we can do here. Camp is going to fall forward, and Jared Camp gets enough for the first down. If it's because you readied up, uh, maybe. Uh, Maz, if you're good with that, yeah, I think so. I think that was just a big thing that I was looking at. Reed's going to slide in the backfield here. A lot of movement pre snap, but look at Jesse Rivers get in the backfield. Yo, Free Bill, thanks a lot for the follow, man. Appreciate that. Whether you're watching on Twitch and you hit the follow button or subbing on YouTube, appreciate you guys. Thanks for uh, taking a little bit of time to hang out today. Second and 12, another read option potentially here. Lanier is going to try to do something. He gets stiff armed like a small child on the playground, and Silas Bryan picks up 12. He means business. Wait, is he in your division? Uh, Wombat. And they keep going back at it. Another run here. But look, the defense is ready for that when the camp gets stopped for another loss. Impossible you carry Cascade Valley to CF25? Yeah. As long as they have a creative team, we'll restart Cascade Valley on College Football 25. For sure. And 11. Ooh, another QB keeper. They are throwing crazy blocks, but Lanier is going to make sure he gets the tackle this time. It absolutely headhunting on this play. Mono y mono, and he won that battle. Brian got a lot of time here. Rivers and company are there, and Rivers is going to get Silas Bryan. Bring him down for the first sack of the afternoon. Big play. So an 11-play 60-yard drive is going to kind of get halted right here. Tennessee's going to line up for a field goal. They felt like they had a touchdown, but this snow caught up to them. That one is nearly blocked, but it is going to be good to cut the lead to four. That's close. Little snow game. Buck, I'm surprised you're uh, talking to me right now. Did you see what happened today in the league? Out of curiosity, Buck. What's up, Free Bill? Taylor Reed and company back on offense. Last time, though, it was an easy drive, as you know, our guy, Tyro Brown, went to the house. This is so cool. Appreciate you being here, Magic. Buck, you should uh, <clears throat> look at who got traded today and who's just go look at the at the starting quarterback for the uh, OKC Bison, you know? 
A little second and ten. Taylor Reed's gonna scramble out a little bit. Got some guys in front of him looking for some blockers. Taylor Reed picks up a nice game. Yeah, Buck's gonna cuss me out pretty hard here. Hey, thanks a lot, Norman. Keep things moving here. He's gonna hand this one off to Tyro Brown. Gets kind of not a ton of yards here, but we'll take three. Uh, still here. <laughs> I don't think Buck's seen it because he's not angry enough yet. A second out, seven yards to go. Wide open across the middle. Carno Killens is going to hang on to this for his first grab. Kind of like afraid to throw anything deep in the snow here. Keeping him moving. A lot of opportunity here, but Taylor Reed's going to smartly throw that one away. Buck is finding out now about CJ. Yeah, he hasn't looked. He's about to find out. Hey, what's up, Knightley? Love the series, bro. Say blessed. You plan on making a new series? Uh, there will be Cascade Valley and College Football 25 and potentially some other stuff as well. Jeremiah Butler's going to slide in the backfield here. Or Derek Johnson Jr. And Taylor Reed out here. A nice pitch. And Jeremiah Butler says, no moves, just running. Yeah, I've got a lot of college football stuff. Um planned so you're going to find like cascade valley will be on college football 25. i might do a second school uh player careers uh rebuilds all types of stuff i think they're down to six we need something here a little dump off here to tyro brown again he's so good in the past game but they're going to get us a little short but coach mervin mcmervin looking at his clipboard like he might go for it Fourth down and three. Squad needs one. And who you go to but Jay Bohm for a 15 yarder. <laughs> My bad, Buck. I, bro, I saw him put him on the block and I was like, I'd be willing to trade Lamar. Now I have CJ Stroud. Keeping the drive alive for Derek Johnson with a nice cutback here. He's going to pick up what looks to be about eight yards. Uh, you're going to get MLB 24 in a drop? Yeah, we'll be playing that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to... I might stream it a little bit on YouTube, too. Uh, that could be fun. But, uh, yeah, we'll definitely be playing that. At least CJ won't have 40 picks again. I hope not. Second and two. Taylor Reed feels the pressure. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Come on now. We're getting out of bounds this time. I'm here for it. Lamar might. I don't know. It's tough to do that with a 99 overall. First thing goal. The squad's feeling pretty good here. Kind of messes it up if you ask me. We're going to go ahead and get rid of it. We had a couple of guys potentially open there. Hendon Hooker for CJ, no sleep. Hooker must return to OKC. Okay, I'll think about that one. I'll think about that one. I thought about it. I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, Jay Will. We got lucky with a nice run from uh, Tyro Brown. Read out here a second and goal. Obviously pretty gassed after what just happened on the previous play. Isaac's is going to get down inside the five. Great run. Again, chat. If you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you guys hit that little thumbs up button. The little heart button helps out an absolute ton with helping people find the stream. You actually offered your team for him. I was even aware CJ was available. I didn't know CJ was available until I was like, I happened. I was going to get up from my desk and go downstairs. I checked Discord, see CJ was available, and I'm like, <laughs> hold on now. Third and goal. We're going right to the man himself, Tyrell Brown. So he can get in there. And Tyrell Brown, they say he's at the one. You know what Coach McMurray is doing. Coach McMurray's favorite play chat. Everybody knows. Tyrell.
Tyrell Brown here in a goal line situation. He's going to get the toss. He's going to sprint freely over there. We got some of the best offensive line when it comes to a goal line situation. And just like that, Cascade Valley is going to extend their lead to 11. Uh, how did the draft go? Uh, I feel good. Maz had the best draft by far. Um, but I really like the draft for how it went for me. I didn't get all the guys I wanted. There were some guys that I was hoping would maybe slide. I actually did a trade today that got me one of the guys that I wanted. Um, but I, I feel good about the draft. Tennessee back out here taking the ball, see what they can do, see if they can cut this lead. You know, they're going with their quarterback run. Donald Gamblin falls down with a clean shot of the quarterback. He's still running. Donald Gamblin fell down, got up, and says, hold on, buddy, check the 40-yard dash. It's different. Oh, my God. Hey, you already know, Adrian. You already know. It's disgusting, Wombat. Yeah, I feel really good about it. I retold my roster, and it's still really good. Silas Bryant has got to be gassed as much as this man has been running today. He throws a little quick dot over here to the edge. Reggie Kraft's going to try to get there, but it's going to be Allen bringing down Darkwa. Uh, nightly. I don't think I'll play the uh, Road to the Show mode this year unless... Oh, I got an alt tab and then click back in. Uh, unless they actually make it worthwhile. Because Road to the Show has been terrible in recent years. Pretty heavy set here for Tennessee. They're going with a quarterback run again. They pitch it to the edge. We have no one there. And it is a great call as Darker goes in to cut the lead now to four. Killing me on these QB runs. Or QB option plays, I mean. Oh, they went for two. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Lining up here, a little bit of a wildcat situation. We gotta get things going. Look, they went for two. They actually didn't get it. So now life is feeling a whole lot better, except for that run, which lost us three yards. There you go. Real deal is trying to give you uh, probably Damian Pierce. Second at 13. Hit him with a little play action. Over the top. Oh, my God. Wildly underthrown. And Cardinal Killens lost it in the snow. Oh, for sure, Mr. Willie. I live in uh, North Carolina. So I know about uh, ECU. But I just couldn't remember who we played uh, a little earlier. I think they're down to 13. The offense has looked great until right now. And McBride, what a catch to keep the chains moving for Cascade Valley. All right, let's get this. Hey, appreciate you being here, though, Argonaut. Mm -mm. Wrong route. This one. Taylor Reed again looking to get some protection here from his offensive line. Not a ton to be happy about again. Smartly getting rid of it. We are not trying to force passes today. Cassius is a true dude. He's so good. That was the guy that I wanted in the draft. Second and ten. Killen's going to move in motion. Reed sets his feet. Throws a dot here to Joe McBride getting his second catch on this drive. Any thoughts on how they're going to make NIL and transfer portal work? Um, I'm thinking it's going to have a lot to do with your school size and with um, the prestige of your school. There's going to be a lot of different things. Boosters. What I'm hoping they do is the more top NFL prospects that you graduate from your school, the better the NIL money is. I'm hoping that's the case. Steve Jr. is going to move in motion. Comes back here to the backfield. Tyrell Brown takes that. Goes up the middle. Tyrell Brown looking pretty shifty today. And he's got a 16-yarder again. But I do hope that, like, graduating top NFL players from your school leads to more NFL money, right? Like, if you're getting, like, multiple top five, top 10, top 15 draft picks, that should get you something. Brown goes right back here for a second carry on that drive. Nice little four-yarder. 
take it easy, Buck. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, but I'm sorry. You know? Approaching in the red zone now. Things looking pretty good. A nice dot here, and that one is off the fingertips of two different players. Oh, man. Third down, six yards to go. Oh, Taylor Reed is going to go down. That is going to be a big field goal coming up for Cascade Valley. Just unfortunate. We've had a couple of throws that have been pretty close, but we're going to line up for a field goal. Oh, no! We missed! Call us the Buffalo Bills, because that went wide right. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. All right. You step to the natty. Respect. Oh, be good, Brev. Back out here again. They go with a nice little run. Look, this run game from Tennessee has been effective. You got to give him props. Yeah, that was a mistake, chat. Dang. I broke buck, I know. Tennessee getting a little split back option here. Oh, they go to keep it in. Heinrich is right there to stop him for a tackle for loss. So how's the stream look for you guys? Look good? YouTube and, and Twitch stream look good? Playing the pass the whole way here. Go with a little dump down. We got Allen and company there. They force him out of bounds. Make it third and short. Looks great. Okay. Let's go here. Let's do a two man blitz. There's no way to keep records and stuff like that in pretty much any game. So it'll be a fresh start, Sergio. 35, we're sending the heat. He throws an absolute dot. Lanier makes him pay, but it doesn't matter. Reed is going to hold that one in. Uh, that's tough. This is good on both platforms. Appreciate you watching on both, real deal. What a nice guy. Tennessee again, trying to take the lead for the first time today. We got a lot of guys that are trying to move around here, and Silas Bryant is nowhere to go. Just trying to bring heat like every time right now. Bryant again, taking a little handoff here. Goes for a little dump off, but it's intercepted by Jesse Rivers. Are you kidding me? The big fella's having a great season. So, Sergio, we don't know what will even be in the new game yet. If they have a creative school, there will just be, like, no records, pretty much. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right, back out here. We're going to try to make sure this drive ends in something that isn't a missed field goal. We would love for it to be a touchdown instead. By the court storming issue, I think storming courts in college athletics is something that's wildly outdated and should have been removed a long time ago, even before Filipowski got hurt. Not a big Kyle Filipowski fan. I love Duke, but... I just think in general, it's like not safe for athletes at all. I think about stuff like if it were my kid, but I want this to happen and I don't want court storming as a thing. Second and inches to go. Jay Bohm's going to slide in motion. Little Jay Bohm underneath a risky throw, but it is going to work. You expect coaches to be in the game? I'm pretty sure there was something that came out that said coaches won't be in the game this year. But I would be surprised by that if coaches weren't. But I think I did read something where they weren't going to be in the game or that was the expectation. Two minutes left here in this first half. A dot to Carnell Killens, but they were playing fantastic defense in him and not letting him get open. You read that too? Okay. I didn't know if I was like making that up, but I was like, I'm pretty sure I read that from a credible source. 
A lot of options here. Pass on the sideline. Jay Bohm toe tap, and you love to see the 22 yarder. Yeah, I hate court storming. I think it's just it's wildly unsafe um, for everybody involved. Tyra Brown back here getting the rock. We're here for it. 11 yards, whatever you got to do. This man's having a heck of a game in the first half. Killens hasn't been super successful with getting some opportunities out here today, but he's out here trying to turn the edge. Nice spin move opportunity, but five yards in the ground is better than nothing. Oh, honestly, of all the things to be in the game, 7-9, uh, or to not be in the game, coaches are the least desirable thing. Most people are creating themselves. Um, so I don't think coaches is, is an issue. Big opportunity to get the ball in Tyrell Brown's hands. He's trying to make something, and he gets drilled on that play. Yeah, I for me, coaches not being in the game is like a... Okay, cool. No one cares. I don't personally care. They're down two yards to go. They're blitzing. And when they blitz, you throw it where it is. And Shannon Hicks is going to get his first touchdown catch of the game. And that lead keeps on growing. Yeah, I just think... Uh, people don't realize like how many assets they truly had to make um, in this game from scratch. It's pretty wild. I'm excited for it. I cannot wait for college football 25. Ooh, it's like a half X screen coming up here. Donald Gamble and the company trying to get there and he stops him in the backfield for a loss. We're going to keep the pressure on him right now. Always got to watch Tennessee and Silas Bryant out here running around a little bit. They've been super effective on the ground with the quarterback so far in today's game. But this is probably the last play of the first half. 13 seconds left. They're just trying to dwindle it down at this point. And we feel pretty good about our chances. We're going to play the pass. We're going to lock them up. And we'll be in a good spot. Goes for it. He throws a little dump pass here. We're going to get the tackle. That's going to end the first half with a 21-9 lead. Honestly, we're good with that. Needed that. All right, cool. We got him at point. So Tennessee did get the ball to start the second half. Didn't really do much with it. So that is going to bring the ball right back here for Taylor Reed and company to go down the field. Six foot three dot. You'd love to see it. Well, they line up in man. We are not running that play. Back out here with Tyrell Brown, again, who's having a fantastic afternoon. Total yards are going to be well above 200 by the end of the game. Uh, no, Jeremy, you get, uh, I usually do two games per stream. Um, pretty much up until my, I get my daughter from the bus stop, so. Well, second and three here. A lot of time. Taylor Reed does get hit as he throws it, however, because a good block set and Jay Bones open across for 18. Uh, it makes sense, 7 9. They don't want to run into the same issue they ran into last time with name, image, and likeness. So, yeah. Derek Johnson spelling out Tyrell Brown this time. Look at the run blocking right now. You got to love to see what this team is doing. Big fan, big fan. 
Free back under center here. It's like a little bit of a blitz. Oh my God, what an absolute blitz here from Tennessee. We got a big fella running down the field. Can anyone from Cascade Valley catch him? It's going to look like it's going to be Kate Delay is going to come down, but that is a huge turnover for Cascade Valley. But honestly, it's on the offensive line. They didn't block 58 and he got in there. Uh, one sec, chat. Okay, just a reminder for all my people on YouTube, I run a uh, sports discussion discord. You can chat with people about any type of sport you want. Basketball, football, baseball. We got it. We'd love for you guys to check that out. Ooh, Tennessee go for something and Anderson is having none of it. For anybody on YouTube, if you click that, we're at uh, like 250 people. So we're doing we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. It's called Maybe Next Year. It's free to join. You talk about sports, talking about the NFL Combine all this week as the Combine starts, I think, today or tomorrow. A lot of good stuff in there. Sending the blitz. And what a hit by Donnell Gamblin. Timing that one perfectly. Beautiful hit. It's the end of the week? Oh. Oh, midweek. Okay, okay. Third and 18 to go. They bring a guy over here in the slot a little bit. We got to be a little bit worried. We got a little bit of an uncharacteristic defense. But they're going with the halfback screen. And that one is nearly intercepted by our defensive lineman. Are you kidding me? So Tennessee is going to line up for a field goal from the left hash mark. We missed one from this hash mark a little bit earlier in the game from not nearly the distance. This one is up. It is going perfectly there, and they're going to cut the lead now to a nine-point game. Man, that turnover really comes back to bite us there. Uh, yeah, but anybody that joins from the YouTube side or Twitch side, exclamation MNY if you're on, uh, if you're on Twitch. Um, you know, just make sure you... I will shout you out once I see your username pop in there, so feel free to join, and I will make sure to shout you out. It's getting a little spicy here. We're trying to work our way back some. We had wide on the middle of the field, but we just didn't see until it was too late. Ain't no problem, Bruce. What's up, Lobo? Second down, 19 yards to go. They're bringing the blitz. Taylor Reed throwing on the run. Not something we usually see from him, and he throws a dot. Oh, for sure, Sergio. For sure. Eventually, I'm assuming you like soccer, but eventually the goal is to get uh, more sports in. But you can always suggest that soccer is an option. And uh, we're adding more sports as more people request it. Third down, two yards to go. A nice pass here. McBride finds a spot in that zone, and we get the first. The first team I'll play with on college football, probably Cascade Valley. Uh, no, it'll be James Madison. The JMU Fighting Dukes will be who I uh, use first. Back here to the run. Tyrell Brown a little slow get out of the backfield there. Maybe he got stuck in the snow. Yo, Ramsey said what? Onyx for Heat. Uh, Mike Ty or Mike. Yeah, Mike Tyree. Thanks a lot for the follows, guys. Yo, Dark Moon Shinobi, thanks a lot for joining the Maybe Next Year Discord. Taylor Reed has a guy, and that one was absolutely baited. Trey Han was ready to go. The fumble, which was not his fault. The interception, maybe somewhat his fault. Tennessee's right back in this game. Nice, Ramsey. What's uh, what's your team? What's your team on uh, revamp? Tennessee again, the second team in our division right now. They're feeling pretty good, putting a lot of that SEC pressure on us. Q 
keeping the pressure again the quarterback is feeling unbelievably good right now our guys are just getting lost in the sauce and silas bryant is having a career day on the ground A lot of misdirection, a lot of great runs here, and Tennessee has just been putting a hurt on our squad, but what a hit by Lanier. Hey, appreciate you being here, Alex. Thanks a lot. And for any of you guys that are looking for more streams too, I stream on Twitch way more than I stream on YouTube. I stream pretty much daily on Twitch. Uh, it's just the same username, Good Game Bro, over on Twitch. You can check it out. Second and nine. Quarterback keeper, we go for that one. We try to get a stop here. We're kind of getting thrown around like small children. What a hit by Lanier forcing a fumble, but too bad Jerry Camp was already out of bounds. Guys doing their best to get in the backfield, throwing off his back foot to Darkwell, who's already been in the end zone once. He nearly gets in for the second time. Bro, we are on the ropes right now. Getting a little spicy now. They go with another QB keeper, but we got guys ready to stop that one all the way. Guys, trying to be prepared here. A big hit. They say it's a fumble. Pollard ran right by it. He had no idea. Was literally playing soccer with it for a second. We need to call a timeout. I messed up. I accidentally audible that play to not have man defense. We had to call a timeout because we didn't have our guys lined up properly. Keyshawn Anderson hit the quarterback. The previous play comes in and gets a sack on this one, and that is going to put them back in field goal territory. Seven tackles, four for loss, and two sacks this afternoon. This dude is balling out right now. So on the last drive, their kicker ended up putting a field goal up. It was good. He's had a long of 43 today. This one should be pretty similar territory, maybe a little bit longer. The kick is up. It is going to be right down the middle. And the lead is now six points. Bam. Nice, Darth Jar Jar. Appreciate you. Make sure so the way to suggest stuff is if you do slash suggest. I haven't looked to see what you did, but if you do slash suggest, you can write out like at a soccer section or whatever. It'll automatically go there. Then everybody can vote on it. The last couple of drives for Cascade Valley have led to turnovers that have just been less than ideal. But I'm assuming uh, all the big Bruce. Thanks for joining the maybe next year discord as well. Appreciate that. Not there. It's not well. All right, a little second to seven. Tyrell Brown has been money in the screen game so far today. That one, he got lifted. Call him John Legend. Uh, any info on the college football game that's coming? I'm going to be dropping some videos. So as long as you're on my YouTube channel, uh, you know, hanging out on the Twitch channel, you follow me on Instagram and stuff, I have a lot of videos covering that stuff. Third down to five. We do not want to be in a bad spot here. Taylor Reed taking a gamble. He's got Isaacs out here stretching the field. <gasps> Michael Isaacs, his hands were frozen. Oh, 
unbelievable drop by Michael Isaacs. We gotta go ahead and kick this one way out. What a hit by Travion Wilson, but just the fact that Isaacs dropped a guaranteed touchdown, it's heartbreaking. That was tough. Appreciate that, Trevor. Cascade Valley team is just a little sad after seeing what just happened there, but at the end of the day, you got to keep on keeping on. You got to lock up, and the defense has got to be the one that helps win this game. Golly, that was so tough, chat. I thought we had that. Cut him. He's just played so well. I just... Oh, it's disgusting. Our guy's trying to get to the backfield. A nice little pass here is going to get another first down for Tennessee. Got to be worried about the QB read option. Oh, we just whiffed on that one, but Heinrich and company are able to bring that one down. I can't believe he dropped that. He was so wide open. Second ten, Reed comes into the backfield. Definitely a QB power play. The blocking here by Tennessee is electric, and then Allen gets run over. Silas Bryant is nearly at 100 yards rushing today. 62, but if you take away the sacks, he's at 100. Long time viewer, first time caller. Can you do with my balls like this? Nah, buddy, they're coming back. Trying to get some pressure again. Look at this. Odiari having a game himself with a tackle for loss. We're fighting for our lives out here. Second of 14. The quarterback looking to keep it. We're just trying to make sure he cannot pitch that ball away. Uh, Heisman with uh, sliders that are tilted heavily towards the CPU um, and then handicapping my own stuff. So it makes it a lot more difficult. Doing our best to try to lock up here. Brian's got all the time in the world. We're so afraid of what might happen here. The defense finally gets to him. Thank you, Poe, for getting in the backfield. And Tennessee will be punting here in the fourth quarter. Always got to be fearful of a potential fake punt here. We got to make sure that we get a good punt return here and get down and get at least a field goal to put this game away. Jay Bohm looking for his first punt return this afternoon. Jay Bohm trying to get to the edge. Not the fastest guy in the world, but he is going to get enough of a return and make it decent. Oh, yeah, Bruce. Yeah, we left. We left Cleveland a couple years back, but uh, it was a good time. We did. We had a good time there. It treated us well. One man rush, yeah, I was, we were playing pass heavy the entire time. Five minutes left in the game. We are struggling to stay where we need to be. This is the team that we should be absolutely blowing out. We thought they might be a little tricky, but Tyrell Brown, what a great run again. There's an argument to be made that we kind of went away from Tyrell Brown, uh, you know, from early in the game. But I feel like for the time that we've had the ball, he's still been an effective part. But they have been sitting on the run more and more. As long as it's a playable mode in uh, or a playable piece in franchise or dynasty and road to glory, Adrian, I think that's all that matters. Second out, eight yards to go. Nice little pass here. Carnell Killens getting him involved, making it third and short. <laughs> I hope so, old man. Just cross the 50. 
Trying to make sure Tyrell Brown can fight for his bread, and he does. Six-yard run. That was one of the, the most critical runs of the game. Clock under three minutes where Derek Johnson is going to come in and try to get a carry or so. Solid run of eight yards. And as crazy as this game has been, we are not trying to do anything too crazy here. A field goal is fine. Remember, we did miss a field goal earlier in the game. We're just trying to convert here. This is a major third down. Tennessee did call a timeout, stopping the clock at 2.15. We got our fullback in there, and we got ourselves a first down. Taking a lot of time off the clock, but there is a possibility that Tennessee still gets the ball back with 2-11. And they wrestle Tyro Brown in the backfield. We're a little too one-dimensional, but they use their last timeout. Two oh nine, Tennessee again. No timeouts remaining in this game. And a solid run of four, but a third down and eight is going to be tough. We don't want to be too one-dimensional, but we do want to go ahead and go with the halfback screen. We've run a couple of them today, and they've been effective. We're going right back to it here. The defense sold out. Tyrell Brown might be in the end zone here. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyrell Brown is going to seal the deal against Tennessee. What a perfectly called play by Coach McMurvin. Because of the score of the game, we are going to go for two, though, because going for two here would be pretty critical to surely put in this game away. Whoa, we just saw a man test him for PEDs. That man was zooming. He was zooming. Nobody cares about Kentucky, Texas. They ain't winning nothing. Brother, what? That man came out there zooming. I don't respect you, good game. All time moment. So Tennessee has the ball back. They're going to be down 12 instead of 14. A little bit of a dicey game, if you ask me. I still can't believe that guy got a speed boost, but it is what it is. Silas Bryant has been really good, especially on the ground today, but now he's got to go ahead and throw more often than not. Not really an opportunity, and he's going to test the young fella, Travion Wilson, who does not care. Big fan. Woo. And just like that, Cascade Valley looking at just running the clock out at this point. Tyro Brown is trying to pad the stats right now. We kind of predicted that he would have, you know, 200 earlier in the game, but Tyro Brown only is going to end up with about a little under 150, assuming he gets a couple of more good runs here. That should put him over 150, but still a great game by him. One fifty-three on the ground, two touchdowns. Got a receiving touchdown out there as well. You cannot be mad if you're Tyro Brown at your output today. You were the reason why we won. And so at the end of the game, look, Taylor Reed out here just struggling. The hit where they didn't block for him, the pass that was an interception, it is what it is. But one sixty-two, two touchdowns on the ground, one touchdown through the air. Tyro Brown is who we thought he was. A soon-to-be two-time Heisman winner. All right, I was a little closer than we thought, chat. I'm going to be honest. That was a lot closer than we thought. Way closer. Recapping the game stats again. 18 for 27, two touchdowns, an interception, sacked three times, 213 yards. Not exactly the game we thought from Taylor Reed after the performance last week, but still... 
I don't really blame all of that on him. On the rushing side, 20 attempts, a buck 62, two touchdowns, one run over 20 yards really was his second run of the game. Taylor Reed and company tried to chime in a little bit, but really the receiving game we saw Tyrell Brown take over to six for 64 and a touchdown. 86 yards after the catch is monumental. A lot of those being off screens. Jay Boehm at 56 yards. McBride, again, the snow, the weather kind of inhibited, you know, our ability to throw the football the way we wanted to. But a W was a W. Defensively, Keishon Anderson was that guy. Seven tackles, four for a loss, two sacks, player of the game on defense by far. Shout out to Jesse Rivers, though, who has been balling out. Five tackles, four for a loss, a sack, and an interception. I mean, maybe he was a player of the game. I don't know, but I'm just happy with how our defense played. Games like this where the offense is kind of struggling, maybe the weather is inhibiting our ability to do the things we want to do, you need the defense to step up, and they did just that today. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one. All right, that is just the outro for the video chat. We're going to get a screen chat, and then we're going to play our next game. Uh, we're playing ECU, which should be hopefully an easier game than what this one was. Uh, what's up, Grandpa? How you doing? And they sold heavily on that one. Yeah, we use the screens a lot today. Actually, I want the uh, I want the run he had in the first. That was such a nasty, just like. Oh, his first actual run of the game went to the house. He just yeah had the lane and was out of there. I almost juked that first defender because I was kind of scared. Oh, I didn't break the camera. That'll be a good one. Uh, let's use snipping tool because the other one doesn't work. That's from stream the other night. Snip this one. Okay. That is episode 191. I never thought I would do this many episodes of a series. You playing Diamond Dynasty? No, because it's a time sink and or money sink. Most card based modes I don't really play that much. Um. I do find myself playing Diamond Dynasty more than any other of the card based modes, but I'm still not like solely on board with them, to be honest with you. I'm I'm still kind of like apprehensive of them because you either need to spend money or spend wild amounts of time. And I don't like doing either. <laughs> I don't like doing either. I would much rather play Road to the Show or a dynasty mode i'll probably do dynasty for mlb uh, maybe create a team and have some fun with that maybe create the cascade valley coyotes you know um advance to we have a buy in week 11. that's why we have a visit that week i think all my games remaining are away games i think Yeah, would you guys watch an MLB Dynasty? I would. I kind of play those where I don't play every single inning. I kind of like skip around the innings to make it more challenging. Because you might sim two or three innings, and next thing you know, you gave up like seven runs, and it's like now you got to come back. And so like stuff like that's fun to me. Robert committed to Texas A&M. You bum. It makes sense. He only had one team in his main thing, so. Uh, all right, Dunstan is the one guy visiting this week. Let's see where we are, chat. So, Nave is pretty much a lock. Even with those two visits for 13 and 14, he's pretty much a lock. MJ, the week 14 and the week 11. I think we're good. I think we're good there. Schweiderman, I think we still lose him. Poke, we are in likely losing him. We're gonna say it's only back 115. 
they visit next week we're only increasing 45 per week depends on how good their visit is whether or not we get him Dunstan I mean he should be a lock he should he should commit to us after that'll give us our, our backup quarterback Duarte we're gonna go into we should stay second and then we should jump them but then do we have enough of a lead for them in 14 that's the hard part we'll see we'll leave him on the board so I can explain that in the next part of the video because we got a sin this week anyways Portland Pines that was a fun time yeah maybe I'll do a different team other than Cascade Valley I like to keep Cascade Valley just to college so people aren't like wait what Nani all right, we'll see how this visit goes. I've sat here and watched us talk about a realistic doll for two hours. Yeah, that was a. Uh... My kids think it's so funny that I'm like weirded out by that doll. Daddy, remember when our aunt brought in that weird doll that scared you that looks too realistic? Yeah, I do. And my son is like, but if you put in a pink bag, you can't see it. Because they had this pink, like, carrying bag for it. Nah, get that thing away from me. Little demons. All right, so Nave is likely a corner. And then Dunson, obviously, is a QB. Uh, nice. Getting both of those guys is a W. Yeah, that doll's weird, chat. I'm not going to say the name of the doll, because I don't want it, my phone to send me a thing for it. But uh, they are... Wildly scary. Okay, top 25. Ha! Rightfully back where you belong. Well, they play Stanford this week, so they could jump us again. Whatever, as long as we're in the top four, I don't care. Miami, this is... So these three... Yeah, this is all good. Three 97 or higher rated teams. And you have Boise State, which is a 91. They actually have gotten better. Okay, so I wouldn't be mad if they were the team. I just don't want Navy. If Navy's in... I like move them out because they don't win those games. CV represents Akron. Uh, and that's huge for me because it's my birthplace. That's awesome, man. Yeah, my uh, I made CVU when we lived in Cleveland. We were pretty close to Akron as well. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a special, special place for me. So I made it because I was like, this is representing a point in time in my life, right? Um, and I just happened to find a place that was the Akron whatever. There's a place in Akron called Cascade Valley. It's like a, a park or like a range, a mountain range. Or something. I can't remember what it was. But I was like desperately searching for a name. And I was like, oh, that sounds sick. And I was like, the Cascade Valley, what? And then I was like, oh, coyotes. Because there's like coyotes in that region. So I was like, this is perfect. This is perfect. All right. So the guys left are MJ. I like our chances. No, Justin, you don't understand what these dolls are. I don't remember the name of them. Someone in my Twitch chat will know. But they are lifelike. And they are wildly too realistic and scary. I just can't even just thinking about them. I'm like, oh, man. The name actually made me think it was in Washington initially, too. Oh, like Washington State. I don't have much knowledge about watching the state, but all right, let's uh swap the music real quick and then let's get into the next episode so we can get this out of here, brother. All right, let's get it. Welcome back to year number 13, week number 12 for the Cascade Valley Coyotes, the number one team in the nation, baby. Now this week we're facing the ECU Pirates, as you can tell by their logo right there, which I just now recognize in this moment. They're not a very good team, but last week Tennessee was not a super great team either. And you saw what happened. Their best player is Mr. Lowry with a 2,062 yard zone in the year, 18 tutties, 10 interceptions. I'm looking at their stats overall, and maybe Heap is a guy to watch out for from a receiving yard standpoint. Maybe Pryor's a solid runner, but I am not fearful of this team. I mean, when you kind of look at what our stats are this year, we should be putting up 60, potentially 70, whatever it is. We should be putting up a senior citizen against the ECU Pirates. I'm just saying. Their logo's pretty dope. Yeah, it is pretty dope. Now, this week, we have Everett Duarte visiting this week, but I have some more important information. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Jameer Nave and Demetrius Dunson, the quarterback and probably a corner here in Jameer Nave, have both committed to our team. That is back-to-back -back four stars. This man is also from Chattahoochee, Florida, which is a place I didn't know that was real until right now. With that being said, we got four guys left on our recruiting board. MJ Williams, who were in first four. Schweiderman, also in first. Greg Polk, your mother's favorite player, also in first. And Everett Duarte, also in first. It's going to come down to the wire. There's a lot of competing visits for these guys this week. But with a visit for Duarte this week, I think our chances to land most of these guys feels pretty good. Oh, let me look at our recruit ranking. And I do want to decide that getting those four stars right there helps us out a ton because we now have 12 four stars, which is disgusting. And we are now the number one recruiting class in the nation. There's still work to be done. So some guys are land, but we've got a top spot at at least being number three. Navy. Getting guys signed up to get 14 recruits, five four stars, eight three stars, one five star going to Navy. Crazy. Um, oh, Wombat, you should be able to go to, um, if you just go to store.gamebro.com or go to the merch site, it should give you an option at the bottom to save it, um, as a web app. Okay. Uh, we check that. We check that. Okay. Now, from a top 25, oops, not top 25, my brain. Now, from a Heisman standpoint, Tyro Brown, still that guy sitting at the top. Again, over 200 yards total offense last week, three touchdowns. No one's really knocking him off the top. Hawthorne did move up a little bit, but you're noticing that our guy, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Quarterback, is not there anymore. Obviously, Taylor Reed not being here definitely sucks a little bit, but there are some good players. Also, shout out to Adrian Harris, who had a very good week with 283, 88 yards in the ground, five total touchdowns in a big overtime win against Mississippi. I get why he's on the board now. Uh, you might see that, Justin. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, top 25. And then from a top 25 standpoint, we are rightfully back at the top of the college football playoff rankings. Number one, USC again tied for us, but they at least have us at the top of that one, which is what matters. We play ECU this week. They play number 14 Stanford. If they beat number 14 Stanford, you have to imagine that they probably jump us again this week. But still, as long as we're in the top four and in the college football playoff, I don't care about anything else. Miami's at three. Boise State has become a very, very good program, getting back to being respectable here. Number four in the nation with a 91 overall team. Navy, I feel like will fall out at some point, but there's a lot of competition and guys trying to get in here with only five undefeated teams left. Okay, I feel... Oh, let me look at awards really quick too. People will ask about that. And then from an award semifinalist standpoint, Tyro Brown, Taylor Reed, both appear for the Maxwell, the Walter Camp, Tyro Brown, again, the number one guy with Reed sitting at number six. Uh, from a Bednarik, I mean, it's pretty much our entire team. We have nine out of the top ten guys for the Bednarik Award. I don't know what to say other than we are that team, buddy. The Nagurski, we have a wild amount as well. We have seven of the top 10 here for this one. Odiari being the top guy. The O'Brien, Reed is behind Hawthorne. I think that's kind of crazy. Uh, Reed has more yards. He doesn't have as many rushing yards, but he has 39 touchdowns versus Hawthorne's 36. So what are they doing? The Walker, you know who it is. Tyro Brown holding that one down. The Belitnikov, we are actually third and fourth with Killens and Jay Bohm. I'm actually really impressed because we haven't really had a lot of guys up for this award in recent years. We're going to try to get those guys the ball a lot more, especially today. The Mackie McBride is sitting at number three. The Outland, we have Mr. Tyrion May at four with Savage at nine. The Remington, May is up for the top spot. The Odiari, I mean the Lombardi, they should call it the Odiari. The Lombardi. Anthony Odiari is right there with Rivers and Poe behind him. Best linebacker, Donald Gamblin, Anderson, and Heinrich all bowling out this year, but Donald Gamblin is that guy, pal. The Thorpe Award, Lanier, Simmons, and Travion Wilson with uh, Mr. Cortez or Chancellor Allen at number nine. The Groza, we ain't really got a kicker doing it like that. The punter, 
Shout out to Evan Shepard. He's out there. And what I'm also really proud about is Jay Bohm is up at number two for best returner. So I think what we're going to have to be doing out here is getting some returns with Jay Bohm. Yeah, I need, I need Jay Bohm to bring home that award, chat. To add to his legacy, we need him to bring home that award. I can't believe we have nine out of the ten uh, for that one. That's so wild. Um, I think we're going to throw... I think we're going to throw a little orange on today. I think I can get the orange jerseys this way, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I miss rocking this combo, and then we throw the orange socks on. I really miss rocking this combo. And what is ECU wearing? They're going to wear purple. I don't think we are a white shirt. Yeah, I feel like that's better. We'll change their socks. Let's make them purple. Okay, and then our jerseys are that. Yeah, this is totally fine. I love this uniform combo. We don't wear it enough. All right, here we go. YOLO. And then just a reminder, Everett Duarte is the only guy visiting this week. We need three sacks from the D line or two tackles for loss from the D line. I think we can probably get that done. If we don't, everyone's scholarships revoked. No big deal. Oh, man. Uh, will Cascade Valley still be the Athlete University in 25? You better believe it. I can't wait to see what recruiting and stuff is like. Uh, we're, re we're returning, chat. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Bohm. You don't see kick returns much. We're trying to win this man kick returner of the year. So Jay Bohm's out here. Jay Bohm is out here. No shot on the first time I'm doing a kick return. Okay, never mind. He gets caught. We almost had it. I will say, though, that's honestly not bad for a kick return. So if j Bowl could do more of that, I'm here for it. We got to work on that man's speed, though. He's good, but that speed could be a lot better. Reed hits him a little play action. Reed, plenty of time, but just can't really make a decision until he says, I'm running. Call him Forrest. Last name, Gump. Get him with a little misdirection here. Had a couple of guys. Maybe they were risky, and he decided to hold on to, and he gets brought down. Oh, the Clippers new uniforms? I think they're solid, but I don't like this era of NBA uniforms where everything is minimalistic. I hate that part. Second down, 21 yards to go. We hit him with a lot of play action so far today. Reed again. Throwing him, and that was a ball that is definitely catchable. Ready, 
Third down, 21 yards to go. Michael Isaacs, the guy that dropped one of the most catchable balls in CBU history. And Gurley Man is going to pick that one up. Are you kidding me? Uh, what's the plan for tonight's stream? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I haven't thought that far. Mm, maybe some Madden, but it might be um, like head-to-head -head games. ECU has the rock, and they are out here trying to do a little trickeration. Democracy? No, nah, I probably won't do uh, that tonight. Second and I, oh, TCU thought they were going to run. Heinrich had other ideas. ECU has a quarterback whose name is Oakley Lowry. That is two last names. We don't lose the people with two last names. Keishan Anderson says, whoa. Okay, never mind. He said nothing. ODR is going to bring that man down. That was kind of scary. Using a line to punt here. Jay Bohm looking for an opportunity to return a punt. He's got 60 return yards already. Can he get more? Well, the blocking looking kind of good. Jay Bohm. Jay Bohm did his stretches this morning. And Jay Bohm says, give him the returner of the year right now. It's his trophy. You'd love to see it, chap. You'd love to see it. We're, we're getting that man kick returner of the year. You better believe it. Keyson Anderson trying to get in the backfield. Gambling gets stiff for him. Are you kidding me? Oh, what I was thinking about the NBA jerseys, though, is... um. I miss the era of like jerseys being different. Now they're just minimalistic color variations with a logo that you don't really see on TV broadcasts until they zoom in. I miss the days of like the Raptors and teams like that or the Magic. Like I miss those days. Bringing the pressure here on the quarterback again. We're not really getting any done on gambling, trying to get in there. He forces the fumble. Jared Bowles going to pick that one up. And ladies and gentlemen, can the big fella rumbling, bumbling? He's not fumbling. He's stumbling into the end zone. So far, the offense is having uh, nothing to do with this game. <laughs> oh, man. The offense has been in the field barely any, and they literally fumbled. And what we're seeing right now is the defense and special teams came to play. Holy. Yo, USR, yeah, you got to be like, yeah, I'm done with you. Second and 10. Keyshawn Anderson gets a big hit. Reggie Kraft is asleep at the wheel. Good Lord. I just, what are we doing, Reggie Kraft? Reggie Kraft is one of those players that I know at some point he's going to make a play for us, and we're going to be so happy that we believed in him all this time. But most of the time, we just wonder... Is he awake on the field? That's a big hit. Hey, what's up, USR? How you doing, man? Bring as much pressure as possible. And Dino Gamble might be the greatest linebacker in Cascade Valley history. And that's saying something considering the guys we've had, like Christoph Houston, who was just a top 10 pick in the GGBFL. But Gamble might be that guy. Let 
you get the guy? Doing our best to watch. An absolute dot there. Oh, nice little cutback until ODR he brings him down. That's fair, NZBAO. That's fair. That's fair. You see you again looking for something here. They got a couple of options. They throw to the sideline for a little check down. Charlie playing Simmons forces them out of bounds. Uh, NZ Bell, I would also say if you like talking about sports, it looks like you do. Exclamation MNY in Discord or in chat. It'll drop a uh, link to a sports Discord, sports community I made where we talk about sports all the time. It's a dedicated sports community. I think you'd have a lot of fun there. Second and eight. Ooh, it's like a halfback screen. Potentially they go for the dump off. Lopez is there and he literally just stripped him in. Didn't even want to tackle him. Put him on the CVU basketball team. Bro, I would love. I have spent money paying a guy to make jerseys for a mod for college basketball. And I just could not. The gameplay was so bad. I couldn't do it. Trying to get to the quarterback again. Simmons got mossed. Luckily, he made the tackle, but he had no idea that ball was coming. Yeah, I would love to do a. I wish there was a really good college basketball mod or a dynasty game or whatever, but they're just not. ECU driving, trying to finally get in the end zone today. They go with a little check down again. We've got Anderson and company there to bring them down, but they get four. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, the Raptors jerseys, like going from the dinosaur to like this. I don't the Raptors have like at least a better version of these, but they still are kind of tough. The quarterback goes for oh my god, Oakley Lowry. I'm sorry for making fun of your name. March Madness March Madness the Legacy didn't work for you. The gameplay's terrible, in my opinion. Wait, am I thinking of the same thing? I'm thinking of the college basketball 10. Ooh, half X screen potentially dialed up, but our guys got there. ODR gets in there for a huge sack pause if needed. Is that NCAA basketball 10? Because if so, I didn't. I tried to do it, and I was like, I, this gameplay is just not it. First quarter winding down, 4 to 16. They're going to go for a punt. I mean, a field goal here. That one is good. It cuts the lead to 11, but this game ain't going to be close. K8 is usually considered the gold standard. Even so, the recruiting in that game is terrible. College Hoops 2K8 has the worst recruiting possible. It's so bad. It's so bad. First quarter winding down. Offense has not really done much this game. We're going to try to switch that up here. It's Joe McBride. Hit him with a spin move. Didn't go nowhere, but we love the spin move. Yeah, I would love a college basketball video game, like a good one that isn't riddled with micro trade. Like, that has a good dynasty. Oh, my God. Reed again makes a little adjustment. A pass here to Michael Isaacs, who failed us last week. He says, hold on, coach. I got something for you. And Michael Isaacs, Michael Isaacs hitting the Heisman? Buddy, you dropped a touchdown last week. K8 gameplay is stiff to you? Yeah. I think the NCAA basketball 10 gameplay is like just not great either, though. It's like super loose and floaty and just, you know. 21 3 lead. We're feeling pretty good. And this defense has already figured out ECU's gameplay. It's going to be a long day for their offensive coordinator. Do not, do not crash or freeze. <laughs> that was my fear. Second and 12, the quarterback goes for one. Reggie Kraft, though, making a play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Big play coming up here. We're trying to get to the quarterback. Lowry throws one quickly because the pressure was there. See, bone time. Jay Boehm already been to the house once. Mikel Lanier was hyping up the crowd because he knows this guy can go to the house any single time he touches the football. Boehm looking for some blocks. He gets out to the right-hand side. Jay Boehm trying to stretch the field. And Jay Boehm, it's not a tutty, but it is a 22-yarder. Do I edit my own videos? No, I have two editors. Um, one focuses right now on YouTube, and then the other focuses on uh, Facebook and uh, stuff for me. A lot of times so till halftime, Cascade Valley already looking pretty dominant, but Tyro Brown says, what about me, coach? So we gave him a run. Yeah, maximum football, well, one, they burned a bridge with me some years ago when they used my voice or game. No, they used my gameplay and used Drew's voice and try to say I was bad mouth in their game. And I was like, I'm not bad mouth in your game. Why are you throwing me out publicly? So I despise them because of that. Second and six, little play action. Taylor Reed says, hold on, buddy. I got some wheels. And he picks up a first down. But yeah, when that, the group behind Maximum Football, like basically I was like pissed. I wanted to sue. I was so mad. And then they were doubling down on it. And then they were like, oh, we made a mistake. I'm like, everyone that watched that is like, that's not GGB's voice. It was uh, uh, not that, not the expert. Out here looking for something. We'll check down Charlie. Jeremiah Butler getting some blocks. And Jeremiah Butler is at the one. I thought he was in the end zone. First and goal, Tyrell Brown. It's not an impressive touchdown, but the Heisman voters don't care. We got to keep that man at the top of the list. But yeah, that whole thing, I'll try to find the video at some point. I don't even know if it's still around, but um, I was like livid that they were trying to paint me as someone that was talking negatively about their franchise when I never did. I was so mad about that. Still am. ECU's quarterback has had a world of problems today, but he's doing a decent job at getting rid of the rock. Yeah, Chad, remind me after this game. I'll try to find it on YouTube because my assumption is they probably left it up or someone has a copy of it. He's going to move in motion here. ECU. Again, feels the pressure. Donnell Gamblin just got in front of a guy. Won't get credited for a tackle, but he was there. Looks like UMass is going to join the MAC. Yeah, I kind of assumed that. I think there was a rumor I saw the other day about it. Third down, six yards to go. A nice pass, and Heinrich made Catalan pay. Oh, they intercepted. I was just trying to. <sighs> well, see, we're trying to sim a couple of plays ahead to get ECU more down the football field. They end up throwing an interception. Chance around and intercepts that ball. So we've got the rock inside the red zone, and we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Yeah, Jeannie, I don't remember the actual name of the video, but I think it was one of the maximum football titles that they were using my uh, footage to try to say I was painting a bad picture about them. Ooh, a risky play. That's not where we wanted that one. A great play by Thornton. The motion trick plays they do in college. Yeah, I think it'll be. I think they're going to have a lot of good stuff, man. The guy that does the playbooks for Madden, it's Anthony. It's an Anthony White. I can't remember. He's so good. He does a lot of good work on playbooks. Third down, seven yards to go. Trying to get Tyrell Brown in motion. It's not really going to work. He gets a loss of four. We're kicking a field goal. All right, we missed the field goal in the previous game. Kind of messing up here. We're going to try to not overcorrect as much, and we'll take the 31 to three lead. College football 25 is custom conference is confirmed. That is confirmed. Where'd you see that, NZ Bell? Wait, does NZ stand for New Zealand? Out of curiosity. Q 
Marquise and Anderson trying to get in the backfield. Lowry, a lot of time, throws one, and Lanier so close to picking that one off. Man, he was doing a good job there, too. Lanier sitting in the box on this one. Watch it underneath. A big ball is going to be thrown to Odie Hardy. Clears Evans. Conference realignment will be in the game. That's good. That's good. I had I haven't like looked for that specifically, but uh, that's good to know that it's confirmed. Big third and nine. They go with the halfback screen. We got guys there. Jaron Poe is ready for. It. He's having a game. Already got a touchdown. Lanier again getting the crowd hype with three minutes left here in the first half. We should be able to get another touchdown drive. We want to get Jay Bohm another good return. He's been so good. He's already got about 150 return yards this afternoon, and that number is going to keep climbing because you got to imagine ECU is out here struggling, trying to get this ball covered in Jay Bohm for the second time today. And now Jay Bohm throwing the Heisman up. 69 yards, hashtag nice. Wild. Absolutely wild. Crazy. So third down 13 now for ECU. This has been a struggle bus of a game for them. And this first half is just getting pretty wild. A lot of our backup players are going to be playing in the second half. A little check down play. We didn't expect that. And 23 gets clear, but he does have a first. Chad, big thank you to everybody that's joined the uh, maybe next year Discord as well today. Uh, slap, I just saw you in there as well. Thank you for that. Trying to trying to grow that number and keep growing that Discord. A little over two minutes now. You see you all the time in the world and a dot to Zach Heap. That was a great catch. Bringing the pressure in here. The quarterback's got some time. He's doing a lot of check downs. The smart labor giving him those. Yo, posture check. I missed those completely. Cap, I'm sorry. And the hydrate. I'm pretty sure I missed both of those. Second down and three. Maybe some sort of screen almost. Maybe not. Keishan Anderson's there, though. Yeah, I know what you mean, Enzy Bell. I know what you mean. Can we get a stop here? They throw another one. This time it goes to Simmons, but he's able to jar that ball loose and make it third and short. So an extremely long field goal here. This is looking like it's going to be... 50-ish some yards, 52, 55. That one is going to be short. The college kicker is not going to have enough leg on that one, and we potentially could score again. Our guys around here are just trying to put in work right now. Taylor Reed not really loving what he's seen. Throws one deep down the field. Are you kidding me? Tyrell Brown is in the vicinity. Tyrell Brown. Give him the Heisman right now. I can't believe that play worked. That play never works. It play never works. Or like throwing that way never works. All right, we just went into halftime. Yeah, 
Okay, they got their sword. Here we go. Oh, we have no word on that yet, Mr. Beckham. No word on that. Oh, looks like they've got a little bit of a wildcat here in a third and two. ECU finally driving down the field. Can they actually get a conversion here, though? ECU is two in the clock, which doesn't really make any sense either, but they bring Castellon in the backfield. It's like a little bit of a power run, and oh, that could have went to the house. Be seeing you, ECU. Yes, yeah, it's, it's about what it is right now. Our total yards are only like barely above theirs, which is the funny part. Donald Gamblin there. Allen also there. Chancellor Allen getting a pick. You love to see the young fella stepping up, tying the record for most interceptions in a game, by the way. No player in Cascade Valley history has ever had three interceptions in one game. Is he used this man of their football program? Yeah, my condolences. Taylor Reed looking for something. Throws a quick one down to Carnell Killens. Carnell Killens, are you kidding me? Could house this one. Carno Killens could house this one. 42 is the only guy that could potentially stop him in on a drag. Everybody throwing the Heisman up right now. pretty nuts uh if team builder is not in the game what team will i play with uh probably some one star university turn them around i would also hope there's a pc version where somebody could mod cascade valley into it so if there's a pc version i would pay someone to mod cascade valley in ecu is down tremendous right now not just mentally not just physically emotionally everything they're down yeah, that's my plan if there's a PC version of the game. This is a blow yet. Yeah, ECU is not a very good team. Lowry again. All day to throw. He gets scared. He does what he does best, which is check it down. Uh, real deal. What do you mean? What's six out of eight? Oh, that was how many passes he's thrown. Lowry again, little handoff here. It's kind of throwing the white flag, in my opinion. Yeah, we've barely thrown the football. We've scored two punt return touchdowns, a defensive touchdown, and then a couple of passes. It's been pretty nuts. It's been a weird game. Second and five. Underneath, Byers is there. We just go heavy with a blitz here. Oh, at least one rushing. Oh, yeah, it was like a one yard rushing touchdown. You're right. You're right. Third down. Barely any yards to go. Reggie Kraft making tackles in the backfield. You'll love to see it. Never has a player scored three kick return touchdowns. In the game. Punt return or kick return. We've never had it happen in Cascade Valley history. Can Jay Bohm be the first? After all these years, after 13 years, can Jay Bohm do it? He's got an opportunity. And they bring him down at the ankles. Yeah, Jay Bohm better be up for uh returner of the year after this. Tyrell Brown does have a pretty nasty receiving touchdown, but he just doesn't have a lot of love on the ground because we haven't really had the ball to run the football on the ground. Oh, you know what? I bet he can get a uh, Wildcat touchdown. Which is the one? I think this is the one that works. So Brown comes out at QB, looking to try to get out here to the edge. He's got some room. It's a solid run. We'll take the 12. Ready. 
Michael Isaacs moves in motion for the jet sweep. He's already got one touchdown today. Can he get another one? Ooh, Michael Isaacs. We're still not forgiving him for that drop last game. Happened in the King family, no boxing career. <laughs> nah. Back out here to the run, Tyro Brown. Great run in between the tackles. He's been fantastic the last couple of weeks. Big Mervin is throwing over the ball. He's like, yeah, where are the trick plays in? Three hits him with the play action. Jeremiah Butler, nice little check down. Jeremiah Butler inside the 10. Taylor Reed, seven for nine, 251 and three touchdowns. Might be the craziest stat line he's had in his career. And that's saying something because this man has thrown for a lot of crazy stat lines in his young career. Tyrell Brown, though, runs a little bit too much east and west. Play all the four stringers? Yeah, they're going to be in pretty much the fourth quarter. Reed comes in here, looking to get his own little run, and Taylor Reed untouched into the end zone. ECU down tremendous. We're probably simming a lot of the defense because there's like no reason to. I think a lot of the backups are in now. Uh, yes, they are. At this point of the game, fourth quarter's not even here. A lot of our backups are in. Thornhill and company are pretty much ready to get things going. They have been incredible uh, so far this afternoon from our starters, and we expect our backups to do the same. These games are always fun because it's like, oh, you get to see the, uh, the other guys for the squad. Second and ten here, Thornhill. He's gonna go ahead and let one fly. Carnell Killis is running past number 42, and I don't think he's gonna have much of a chance. Yeah, Bubba Sparks said it best. Ugly. If they get past like the 30, then I'll we'll show what they're doing. Oh, okay, they did. Thornhill's got a cannon, yeah. Maz is taking notes over that one. <laughs> Third quarter's running down. ECU. They're still technically out here. DJ Byers says, hold on, buddy. I got some, and I'm taking it. Oakley Lowry and coming to the GGBFL. <laughs> Yo, Bushido, I'm sorry. <sighs> One second left here in the third. This is the last play we're going to have in this quarter. And woo, Thornhill, okay. You can't always be perfect. Crazy, man. Uh, Mr. Beckham, like the, uh, like the helmet stickers and stuff. Um, if they, I don't know if they're going to have those in the game. I hope they do. We don't, there's no ability to do them in this, uh, revamped version that I have. Thornhill and company just trying to put up numbers right now. This squad is wondering why Mac Thornhill can't complete the pass now. He wants some championships, Doc. He wants some championships. Third and ten. Obviously needing a little bit of something here. After going for a touchdown, I'm surprised at what just happened in here. All right, we'll cut. We'll go back to them, see what they can do. Third or four. Th 
Third down, four yards to go. ECU is just, they're trying. A wide open touchdown, and we trip him up enough so he doesn't get in the end zone. If they score a touchdown, we're upset. Our guys doing their best, and that ball is thrown away. Oakley Lowry throwing 48 passes today. Imagine your college coach has you throwing 48 passes in a game, and your team still only has three points. That is just tough. They want a touchdown. They are desperately trying to get one, and they may almost have one. Uh, one is that apply, Beckham? Who created yours? Uh, out of curiosity. First and goal. Wide open play. Okay, easy. You did it. Okay, you got us. Okay, on our backups, you scored a touchdown. Finally, we're going for blood. I think at this point of the cycle, I probably wouldn't waste money on having like paying someone to uh do helmet stickers just because uh like i only have a little bit more time probably with this game so yeah thornhill threw a touchdown pass and has struggled to really throw a completion since then and finally he completes the pass no mhj your neighbors in the combine would have done z would be participating it makes sense all right most of the top guys have nothing to prove his arm's gonna be sore tomorrow. You can say that again. Thornhill again, trying to get some touchdowns here. The pressure is real. He had a couple of guys he wanted, but just no offensive line protection. Second down, 20 yards to go. Thornhill. I can take the blame for that one. <laughs> so I'm just trolling. I'm trolling. What's wild is we're up 65 to 10 and we are 0 for 3 on third down conversions. It is uh, definitely interesting. We also have Grant Cox, a backup quarterback out at wide receiver because he was an athlete coming in. So he can do both. Okay. He can do both. But can he do this? <clears throat> okay. I thought that was a touchdown. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, shoot, we got the ball back. Pennings will be thrown at the combine. It makes sense for him. He he has a uh, an opportunity to jump up. We're not giving up, okay? We want the 70 burger. I thought we were going to get more than that. I was incorrect. Thornhill, unleash the cannon! Michael Isaacs catching a deep ball. Pause. Oh, yeah, I don't understand the hype for McCarthy personally, but maybe the combine will change my mind. First and goal. Just cannot believe how this game is currently going, but Shannon Hicks, can we go ahead and get more? He was driving. All right, look, I'm a little disgusted. We've allowed this team to come down the field and almost score their second touchdown of the game. What are we doing, Cascade Valley? Oh, this is a different quarterback. I'm like, wait a second. We haven't seen this quarterback run all game. Okay, ECU, you want to score and get 17? We're going for 80. I think my favorite thing about ECU is that despite being down 72 to 17, they still kick an onside kick to give us better field position. So thanks for that. Appreciate it. Why Lowell McCarthy? Well, I know you're high in McCarthy because you go blue. 32 is your username. 
Um, I just personally don't see a crazy high ceiling for JJ McCarthy currently from what I've seen, but, uh, again, my mind could be changed. Second out, six yards to go. They are giving Mac Thornhill the business. If you're new here, welcome. Third down, six yards to go. Do we go for it on fourth down here? Yeah, you bet we do. Just kidding. We're going for a touchdown. And we're going for two. I believe. We're going for two here. Sadness. Wait, we got the ball back? So somehow, even though I send the kickoff, we got the ball. I don't really understand how. Maybe we went for an onside kick because we're toxic. I don't know, but I'm going for 80. That's dope, Mr. Beckham. That's dope. Uh... Oh, Arrowhead did yours? Got you. That's who did. Um, He did the most recent jerseys I had. Not the ones that you're seeing, but he did the ones. Um, Some other ones that I have. The most recent three that I made. We just wanted the 80, chat. We fight for that meat, yo. Hey, just like that, we're going to walk out here with an 80 burger against a bum team. Jay Bone, player of the game, 76 kick return yards, 194 punt return yards, and two, count them, two return touchdowns. I think he should be returner of the year. If this game doesn't prove it, then we got to fight all the voters. What's up, Akeem? Pretty much, Gene, pretty much. Yeah, real deal, but they it said fumble, but it didn't make sense because we got the ball at like the eight yard line. That's why I was confused. Like, did we go for an onside kick? We shouldn't have. Like, I don't understand that. Can I subscribe to your channel? You can do whatever you want. It's your account. You're more than welcome. Recapping the stats, it's probably the fewest passes we've ever thrown to get 85 points. Our starting QB went seven for nine, three touchdowns. Our backup quarterback went seven to 13, four touchdowns. And we scored 85. On the ground, I feel bad for Tyrell Brown, 8 for 38 and one touchdown. Not exactly the game that'll keep him atop the Heisman voters, but we've got work to do still at this point. On the receiving side, though, he does go 2 for 58 and gets a receiving touchdown. Isaac's got a touchdown, as did Roderick Johnson and Shannon Hicks. Carnell Killen's got two of them things, 2 for 50, 152. Uh, we also see Scaife Jr. get one as well. Defensively, I'm surprised that, you know, our guys even had stats considering how big of a blowout this was. But eight tackles for Reggie Kraft. Odiari goes to eight as well. Uh, from a sack perspective, we got to the quarterback with Gamblin, Poe, and Odiari. We didn't get to three with the defensive line that we needed. Only got two. And the interceptions, we got two from Chancellor Allen, one by DJ Byers. And the defense just played lights out. ECU is not a very good team. They are a team that we kind of put in the schedule to get our ego up. Because we need that at this point of the season. Playing tough game after tough game is great but also kind of just mentally wears you out a little bit. So we see you, we appreciate you. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one. Okay, there's that. And then now I need to get a screenshot. Who should, oh, it's gotta be Jay Bohm. Jay Bohm to the house has gotta be the, uh, the thing. Hey, appreciate it, Joseph. Appreciate it, man. Show us the Max Football video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're back up at 99 overall. <laughs> I think with like he's like a 97, but he has some sort of boost on. But uh, yeah, he's definitely he's definitely killing it. All right, this is J Bone. Go to the house. Uh, how? Nothing super exciting on that one. When was the other one? Was it the same quarter? Did J Bone return the other one? That's 17 yards. It's got to be second quarter he returns it. Oh, it's a 22 yard dude. Mm. 
Mm. Maybe it was first quarter. That's a 60 yarder. That was 84 yards. Am I tripping? Maybe it was third quarter? Might have been third quarter then. Uh, yes, Maz, I did. I did. It was ECU. So, like, in fairness, this is a, this is a, this is an ego game. You know, boost our ego, kill their ego. But it was definitely an ego game. Chat, where was Jay Bohm's second punt return for a touchdown? Jay Bohm definitely, definitely had a game. Maybe it was that 60 yarder they wouldn't let us see the replay for. All right, we'll do the 60. We'll do the, the other one then. He's going to do this on week 11. Is that when I play you? I don't know. I Look, I did what I usually do. I traded 400 people in an offseason, and now my team looks entirely different. I personally don't like having 99s all over my roster. I feel like that's just, you know, it's more rewarding when I win with a roster that isn't beyond stacked. I just love that. I just personally love that. Slightly turns. There we go. That's the thumbnail. Needed enough blue sky on it. Uh, this and new and that. Episode 192. What a run, chat. If you would have told me I would have had a YouTube series over 200 episodes, I would have said you're crazy. Cascade Valley, a little different, brother. Wait, why did that guy delete all of his messages? <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Okay. Um, I need to save. We'll save this as week 13 since we're about to head into. Get back on my file. So they do CVU year 13, week 13. Ooh, it's a bye week as well. Almost a 200 milestone. What a run. I know. It's so crazy. I'm doing good, Astro. How are you? The very you started this series? I know. I went back and watched some of the early videos when I had braces too. And my camera setup was like way different. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what am I doing with this camera setup? That thing was tight on my face. With braces? That was a bold move. That was a bold move. All right, let's see what this does. Ooh, we got Duarte. We kind of knew that was going to happen. Kind of knew that would happen. Um, and then in the bye week, let's see what, our, what we're looking at here. Hey, no problem, Adrian. No problem. All right, so we have MJ. Um, oh, yeah, this is a matter of time before we get him. No other team can really hop in. Like maybe a Florida and LSU, but I think we're going to be fine. But he could he could, he could drag this out to the offseason. I hope he doesn't. Schweiderman will probably lose him in the following week with that thing. 
and then Greg Poke, your mother's favorite player. This is going to be a tough battle. We might lose Greg Poke, which will be an all-time sad situation. An all-time sad situation. All right, so we advance this one because, again, ooh, we played Texas week four after I bad mouth them. I didn't think they would be bad, though. I thought they would have been good. They are not the good, not the good right now. I'm like actually surprised. They were like four and four. Um, a few weeks ago, so I don't I don't know how good they're gonna be. We shall see. Yo, Roland just joined the maybe next year Discord. If you want to join that Discord chat, either ask for the link in YouTube and I'll give it to you, or exclamation M N Y on Twitch uh, for the maybe next year Discord. Texas is four and seven. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. All right. So again, MJ or Gucci. Notre Dame's going to fall out soon. Schweiderman. This is the week he'll probably fall out. And then Greg Pope. We're moving up 145 per week. There's a chance. But he has to let us go into the offseason. We're not going to have enough time in the regular season to uh, get him is the really tough part um and then from a heisman perspective all right tyro brown is still number one redmond came in there wow four for 144 receiving for a running back this dude is who i'm worried about adrian harris he's like he's put him good stats five touchdowns 300 plus yards total offense this guy's stuff feels like so so his stuff is really good too. This guy's a baller. Tanner Hawthorne. We need to we need to put him in the GGBFL. What are, what is his uh rating stuff look like? 86 speed, 77 acceleration, 93 throw power. Yeah, this this will be a uh, GGBFL guy for sure. 5'10, 224. Yeah. So like Johnny Manzo. Oh yeah. And then top 25, I think we're still we're still right there. Love to see it. Love to see it. All right. Uh, YouTube, I'll catch you guys later. Uh, a new Cascade Valley video is dropping in like 15 minutes for you guys. So make sure you check that out. Um, but thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.